would only show her in the most unsentimental aspects, beating Mads with her head tied up in a bandana, parricating herself with the sofa pillow, or throwing cold water over his passion a la comiche, and an irresistible laugh spoiled the pensive picture he was endeavouring to paint. Joe wouldn't be put into the opera at any price, and he had to give her up with a bless that girl, what a torment she is, and a clutch at his hair as became a distracted composer. I don't think Larry was ever in love with Cho. He was in love with the idea of love, not the actual person. And he admits to himself that Cho would not be put into an opera at any price. Well, maybe if Fritz would compose an opera for Cho. When he looked about him for another and less intractable damsel to immortalize in melody, memory produced one with the most obliging readiness. This phantom wore many faces, but it always had golden hair, was enveloped the finest cloud, and floated airily before his mind's eye in a pleasing chaos of roses, peacocks, white ponies, and blue ribbons. He did not give the complacent red a new name, but he took her for his hearing, and grew quite fond of her, as well as he might, for he gifted her with every gift and grace under the sun, and escorted her, unscratched, to trials which would have unhealed any mortal woman. So here we have Laurie creating this fantasy woman of his dream. It does resemble Amy a little bit, but it doesn't have any kind of personality. But I think Laurie is like, I think he's 26 at this point. He's a grown man, and then he comes up with this kind of daydreams. This shows how idealized ideas he had about love. At this point, he doesn't see Joe and Amy as individuals. For him, love means that he himself sees himself as a romantic hero or a romantic prince, and his mind conjures this kind of romantic princess for him. And at this point, he's not a good husband candidate for either Amy or Joe. And at uh, this part, it has never been adapted. Thanks to this inspiration, he got on swimmingly for a time, but gradually the work lost its charm, and he forgot to compose while he sat musing, pen in hand, or roamed about the gay city to get new ideas and refresh his mind, which seemed to be in a somewhat unsettled state that winter. He did not do much, but he thought a great deal, and was conscious of a change of some sort going on in spite of himself. It's genius shimmering, perhaps. I'll let it simmer, and see what comes of it he said, with a secret suspicion, all the while that it wasn't genius, but something far more common. Whatever it was, it, it simmered to some purpose, for he grew more discontent with his desultory life, began to long for some real and earnest work to go at, soul and body, and finally came to the wise conclusion that everyone who loved music was not a composer, returning from one of Mozart's grand operas, splendidly performed at the royal theater he looked over his own played a few of the best parts sat staring up at the bust of mendelssohn beethoven and bach who stared penningly back again then suddenly he tore up his music sheets one by one and as the last fluttered out of his hands he said soberly to himself she's right talent isn't genius and you can't make it so that music has taken the vanity out of me as Rome took it out of her, and I won't be a humbug any longer. Now, what shall I do? This is my personal favorite Laurie moment, because this is the time when Laurie starts to turn from a boy into a man. This process was completely started by Amy when she lectured him. I said it so many times in this podcast, part of Laurie being a master procrastinator, it's never in any Little Woman films. And just like Amy says... Joe hates lazy people, and Amy herself doesn't like that Laura is being unproductive. But here you can see how Amy has a great influence on Laurie. It's like what Emily said in the 150-year Laurie episode. There are people who just should get a job and not have these illusions of what artist life actually is. And Laurie is very privileged because he comes from a of a wealthy background and he also comes to the conclusion that not everyone who likes music is a master composer 
And that to him is another wake up call. And I am very proud of him when I read this. That seemed a hard question to answer. And Laurie began to wish he had to work for his daily bread. Now, if ever occurred an eligible opportunity for going to the devil, as he once forcibly expressed it, for he had plenty of money and nothing to do. Thank you so much for listening. Link to the full episode, Laurie's proposal to Amy, deep analysis, is in the description. Take care and make good choices. Bye.